Hello there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today we're going to be covering some basic examples of how to use Python in Dynamo. Um, so we've been through a few series already, we've looked at custom packages and nodes, and we've looked at Python fundamentals. Highly recommend you watch my fundamental series before you get started with this, because I'm going to be skipping over some syntaxes I cover in here in Python. Um, but now we're looking at a few videos of how to apply Python to Dynamo. So today we're just going to do a few basic examples. Um, so we're mostly looking at passing data between Python and Dynamo. So we're not going to be focusing too much on unwrapping elements or dealing with Revit model elements just yet. Um, and we're not going to be using any uh, direct Revit API in this video. We're going to be looking at that in future videos because it's a little bit more complicated than just Python as it comes. So we're giving some context um, to what we've learned in our fundamental series, essentially. Um, so in this video, we're going to be processing elements between Python and Dynamo, sending them between the node and back out to, to future um, nodes in the script. So let's just get stu stuck into some examples. I'm going, to be, I'm going to be using a few from my custom package, which you can find on my GitHub, um, that I've already built and I know they work, so I'm comfortable sort of showing them in, in training. So we're just going to start with the most basic uh, node that I've ever built in Python in Dynamo, but it's a good one just to learn about passing inputs and outputs between nodes, which is an if then else node. So what I'm going to do is just jump straight into Dynamo. And I'm just going to call immediately on a Python script. So by default, uh, a Python script always contains an out and it contains a variable number of inputs. So I can just add and remove them. You always want to make sure that the inputs you're calling on in your Python script are equal to the same number of inputs that the Python node body has as well. We could obviously turn this into a custom node when we're done, but I'm just going to build it on the native Revit canvas for now. Um, you can rename Python script nodes if you ever want to make them sort of say what they do. So I could just write something like this. And if someone knows Python and Dynamo, they'll probably recognize this in out as a Python script. Um, so let's just get started. So I'm just going to add a few inputs first. I'm going to make a Boolean, which is either true or false. I'm going to make a list between 1 and 5 and a list between 6 and 10. So as ranges. And I want to make it so that when it's true, this comes through. So what we're calling then. And this comes through when it's false or else as our output. So currently by default, nothing comes out except in this case, it comes out as true because I've just I've got a Python template that passes my first input as my output, just so that my Python node doesn't throw a warning. Um, the reason that I built this node is because by default, most people might know that the if statement doesn't really work as we want it to. So you can see 1 through to 5, and if I go to false, let's just say 6 through to 15 actually. Note that it stops it at the limit of the shortest list available. So we don't want it to work that way. We want it to pass all the data through. So in this case, we'll just go true, and we'll start editing. So we'll right click and go edit. So this is my Python template. Um, it contains a lot of the boilerplate. Um, it has like a little node about that I made the node and just a few things like the transaction manager and the act active document. For now, we're just gonna control A and delete everything. So we're just gonna go right back to basics. So the first thing that I'm gonna wanna do when I work with Python and Dynamo, so I'll just put this side by side, is I'm gonna wanna call on my inputs and make them variables typically. So I'm just gonna say in this case that uh, if, uh, we'll say if bool for if boolean. Um, note that I couldn't use the word if because if is a reserved word for if statements. Um, so you're going to need to be careful what you call your variables. Usually, if you put an underscore in them, and they're pretty safe. So we'll just say that that is equal to in square bracket zero square bracket. So that is essentially calling on our first input. What we can do now is also say then. Uh, in this case, I think then and else are okay equals in one and else. Okay, so there we go, we can't use else either. We'll just do else variable and then variable equals in two. So now we've called on all three of our inputs. What we don't have now is our output or what happens to the, to the script. So in this case, let's just say out equals to then variable. You can see what happens is that the Python script will pass out in its output that variable that we pass through. So that's how easy it is to pass data through a node in Python. Um, what's the hard part is processing the data inside uh, the node itself. 
So we're just going to set up a very basic if statement. So I'm just going to say if if bool and then colon and inset tab and then call on my then variable else and then my else variable. But at the moment, I'm not passing the data to my output. So what I probably need to do is declare another variable called result. And then in my out variable, I can just pass result instead. So now I can see when it's true, it's one to five. And when it's false, there you go. So you can see that we've got an if statement working within Dynamo now. Um, so this is a really handy node, but it's very simple, very easy to learn. Um, so it's a good starting point. I could obviously really simplify how the script works um, quite a lot. So I could literally just natively call on each piece of data and I could just assign the out variable in the result. So I could say if in zero, then out equals to in one, else out equals to in two. And essentially I've done the same thing. So you can see it still works the same way. The main difference here is that if a new user came and looked at your script, they might not understand it as easily. So it's up to you how much you want to elaborate on your scripts when you write them. But be mindful that the less things you put in them and the less um, steps along the way you add, uh, the less easy people will be able to learn from what you do. Um, so let's move on to another one. So this is what I call list forcing. It's actually a really important technique in Python for Dynamo. Um, I use it quite a lot because a lot of the time you'll build a node, but you want to set it up so that if the user passes in one element and you need to iterate using a for statement, for example, um, you can't iterate over an, an object that's just one, one item. Um, you can iterate over a list that's one item or a list of many items. So what you want to do in this case is you want to set it up so that the list is converted if it's not a list. So there's a statement or a function that we can use for this that I found just through research, um, which is the isInstance function. So it's really handy for validating whether a piece of data is of a particular type. So we can obviously use this to check if something's a list because a list is a data type or a class. So we're gonna use this function really quickly um, and then I'll show you how you can turn it into a shorthand statement as well, which we've sort of looked at before in the fundamental series. Okay, so in this case, we're gonna change our node. It's gonna have one input. And let's just make two variables. We'll make five and one through to five. So one of these is obviously a list and one isn't. So this is obviously just a, a, a number or a, a float. I think it's actually an integer technically. And this is a range, so a list. So what we're gonna do is say that, we'll say uh, input equals to in zero. And we'll say that check, which is our Boolean to make sure that, you know, it is a list is equal to uh, is instance. So we're going to call on that function. And in this case, we're going to check input and we're going to check if it's a list, which is the second argument. What we'll do now is just set up an if statement and we'll say if check. So if it's true and it is a list, we're just happy to say that the result is input it's already a list so there's no problems else result is equal to input but it needs to be a list so we'll put it in the square brackets and then out equals to result so it's another basic if statement with a function now you can see that when it's five it becomes a list and when it's a list it's already just a list if it was always just being turned into a list you'll see that when we pass in a list, we get a list within a list. So that's why we need to use this statement um, just to create a list when it's not a list. So in this case, we can see what we ended up with. Um, we could really simplify this down though by using a shorthand statement. So you might recall that we can actually declare then first. So we can say then is in zero if, and we'll declare our Boolean is instance in zero list which will yield the boolean of true if it's a list. Um, so we've declared our then, and then we declare our else, else in zero in a list itself. But then we, <clears throat> then we just say that out is that. And now you can see we essentially get the same thing. So you can really simplify what you write in Python. Sometimes in scripts, you'll have many variables that you actually 
put this, this um, statement over in order to turn them into a list if they're not. So sometimes what you might want to do instead is define a function that does this instead. So let's just do that as well. So we'll just define a function by writing def. And you can see in Python it goes italics and light blue. And we'll say define is list. And we'll just say that we have an input. And then we'll in insert. And in this case, we're just saying, uh, we'll just say result equals to, and in this case, we'll say is instance input and we're checking if it's a list and then we're returning result so we'll just run that so nothing changes right now but now we can just pass this function over our input is lists and zero in this case you can see we're getting the boolean um, so that's a little bit different so probably what we actually want is we want to put in that statement so we'll say input if result else input in square brackets and we'll just say result two and we just return result two instead and there you go so we've got the same effective outcome from using a function and if we had say 10 variables that we wanted to apply this to then obviously writing a function is much more efficient than calling on a really long-winded statement over 10 times in our script okay so we're just going to jump to our next basic function um, this one, we're just going to look at basic iteration. So you might recall from our fundamental series, you can iterate over a string. So in this case, we're going to iterate over a string. So we're going to be looking at the characters of a string. We're also going to give the option for the user to substitute spaces in the string with a particular character. Um, because otherwise you end up with spaces in a list and it's very hard to see them. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to jump back to Dynamo. And as you can guess, I'm going to start a new Dynamo script. Uh, I'll just make a new Python script. Oops. I'll just clear this again. And I'm going to have two inputs in the script. The first is my strings. The second one is what I'm substituting the spaces with. So in this case, I'll just say my string is string, string one with a space. And I'll say that I want to substitute with underscore. And I'll just connect in my inputs. It's good to have these ready before you start building because this way you can actually keep testing your, your Python script as you write it. In this case, let's just say my data is in zero. So my string and then my sub or my substitute is in one. Sometimes I like to make the equals line up so it's cleaner to read the script. Now we're just gonna call on whether our data is a list. So remember before we had to check if our data was a list or not. So we're gonna check is instance, because uh, maybe we have more than one string coming in. So we'll just really quickly do this. So we're checking if our data is a list. And then we're saying that our string list equals data else. And I need to space that. And in this case, I just need to fix that. Otherwise, string list is data in square brackets so that it's a list. What we're gonna do now is iterate. So we need to build an empty list that we can add the characters to. So I'm just gonna make an empty list called final. So I'll just put two close square brackets to make an empty list. We're gonna iterate over our strings now. So we're, not, we're gonna iterate over our string lists, which currently is just one string, but then we're gonna iterate over the strings within that list. So we're gonna do a nested for loop. So we're gonna say for str as our variable in string list. So I'm just calling my local variable str in this case. And we're going to make another empty list called characters because each string needs to have a list that the characters go into as well because we're going to iterate again so we're going to go for character in string so notice i'm passing my local variable down to the next level so that we can refer to it at a deeper level and i'm just going to check here if my character is empty or a space so i'm just going to say if character is equal to an empty string we're going to want to append this, but we're not going to append the character. We're going to append the substitute instead. So you can see we've got our substitute back here. So we're calling on that variable. So we're adding the substitute instead of the character. But if it's not, then we just want to append the character instead. 
So this will append the character as it appears in the for loop. And then right at the end, we obviously need to go and append our characters. So this essentially sets up a nested for loop. And then we can just make our out equal to our list of final. In this case, I think I've missed, missed something. When in doubt, just quickly recheck what you've done. That's usually what I like to say. So you can usually check where you went wrong. Okay, so I went wrong in actually right at the start by the looks of it. So I went wrong right at the start. That's a bit strange. Ah, is instance. Instead of instance, instead of is instance, is instance, is, sorry, tongue tied. Instead of writing is instance, I wrote instance. <laughs> So that's, that's all it takes to bring a Python script undone. And now you can see we've got string one and our space is replaced by an underscore. Let's say we had a list of strings instead. So this is where it's useful that we add that catch-all. So I'll just make a list of two strings instead. And now our Python script should pick up and should sub-iterate across a list of strings. So you can see the power of adding that is instance function into your script. And you can see that in this case, it's worked. Um, I think in that case, I need to add a space. And there you go. Um, so that's a, a good example of iterating and where it can be useful in processing data. Um, obviously not too many uses for that, but it's a good example of iterating and then sub-iterating. Okay, so for our last example, um, it's quite an easy one, but it's calling on a package that isn't necessarily what you'd expect to be native to Python in Dynamo. So Dynamo does have some packages available. Um, we touched on a few of them, I think, in the last video. So in this case, we're gonna be using the random package. So there was no documentation I could find within Dynamo itself about how to use random numbers um, using Python. So what I had to do instead is go to, uh, in this case, just a website and search for how to do random numbers. And what I came back with was a package called random. And I, th I thought, hmm, I wonder if Python already has the random package. So I just got these two lines from random import C, then from random import random. And I can see this is some syntaxes here. So you declare a C and then you can just call on a random number using random close brackets. Um, but yeah, I went to Dynamo and lo and behold, the package is available. So in this case, I'm going to build a script using four, four variables. So I'm going to have uh, in this case, how many numbers do I want? Um, what's my seed? What's my minimum? And what's my maximum? So a pretty common random number generator uh, that wasn't present in Dynamo by default. There's, a, there's the ability to generate random numbers without a seed and also the ability to generate one random number, but not a list of them between a range. So I'm going to copy in these two lines from random import seed from random import random. If I run this, I can see that I have no warning. So I know that the package is available. In this case, I'm just going to collect some variables. So I'll just say round count is my first variable. Round seed or R seed is equal to the second. The minimum or R min is equal to the third. And the maximum is equal to the third, sorry, the fourth. So you can see here I'm declaring quite a lot of variables. So it's a little bit more complicated, this script. Um, in this case, we're just going to declare R seed. So I saw that you can just do this by literally just stating the seed. So we're going to get our seed. And this is so the user can change the seed in a custom node, for example. What I will do after is probably turn this one into a custom node just to show you what you can do with the Python script once you've packaged it. Um, what we'll do now is just say numbers is an empty list. because so These are the numbers we're going to build and output. And we're going to say for r in a range. And in this case, we're just going to state that the range is to the size of r count. Um, you can declare a range with just one. The, 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 the first option, the first um, argument is optional. You can just say what the maximum of the range is, which implies that it goes from, from one to the end. And we're going to create a variable called value. So what value are we going to generate? And in this case, we're going to generate a random number, but we're going to remap it to a range. So we need to use a formula here. We're just going to start by making a random number and then just appending it to our numbers list. We use nums append value. So we'll go out equals to numbers. So let's say in this case we want 10 numbers, uh, we'll do five numbers, a seed of one, a minimum of one, and a maximum of 10. 
we'll just connect uh, inputs. So if I run this, at the moment it's just between the range of 0 to 1 because that's how the random function works. What we need to do instead is map this to our function. So we're going to map it to our maximum, but in this case we need to make it our maximum minus our minimum and then add our minimum to the bottom so that it's between our maximum and our minimum um, by the factor of the range. So in this case, we're gonna do our minimum plus this. And now instead we get this between the range that we're working with. In this case, it looks like, hmm, I wonder if it's just not quite coming out randomly like I expect. Yeah, just everything was below six, which is quite surprising. Now you can see it's a bit more random. As I change the seed, I can obviously see all those values change, change quite a bit. There we go. So that's um, essentially how you can work with a few more variables. Um, let's say you want to turn this into a custom node. What you have to do is just click and select this and just go to create custom node. Give it a name, uh, tell it where it belongs. In this case, I'll just say it belongs in test and it's called test. You could obviously add more information. Now, usually you'll get something like this, that it contains invalid inputs. What we need to do is actually go into our node and start reviewing where the inputs are. In this case, they're just, they're all invalid because they're called in one, in two, in three. So they're implying an index of a list, which is not what we want. So what we can just do now is we can just call these our inputs. So I can just call this count. And I can, I can set a default as well, if I want. Um, in this case, I probably just won't. I think I'll just leave it. Uh, I'll say seed. This one, I'll say it's an integer and it starts off at a default of one. For our minimum, um, I'll just call this min and our maximum can be a max. Um, I usually go to a bit more detail with this. So I'll show you the actual custom node I built in a sec, just to show you how much detail I put into them. Um, but that would essentially do the job. And um, we could essentially just save it from there. And now we can see that our node is packaged and we can run it as a Python script, which is great. And the good thing about it being a custom node is you can apply levels to certain aspects of the script as well. Um, in terms of what I did with this by the end of it, if I just go to math function random, it's similar. Um, obviously I gave it a proper name, but you can see I'm, I've put a little bit of documentation on the description of each of the aspects of the node. So we've got more description about what the node does. Um, and I've set a few default values as either doubles or integers. So by default, you can see it's already ready to go, even though it has no numbers in it. And you can see those descriptions there as they come through. So you can see that the, you can see the default values, but also the text that I've put on each of the inputs. So it's, it's usually good practice um, to try and add annotations to what you're doing. You can do multiple lines as well. Um, but yeah, essentially the only thing I do on top of that is I usually add some comments to each section of the script just to explain what I'm doing so that other people can learn from what I've done. Um, but that's essentially just a few basic Python scripts. Um, so hopefully they help get you started. So in future, we're gonna be looking at a few things um, in Python, uh, probably about maybe three or four videos total, um, and then a few more in the future when I've explored it further. So we're gonna be looking at some examples that use the Revit API, um, and then we'll be just doing maybe like one or two advanced samples. We'll be looking at what's called a filtered element collector, which is quite a common method for collecting elements using Python in Dynamo, um, and then probably taking a quick break and then maybe some, some more videos in future. So um, if you want to see the example specifically, um, feel free to visit my GitHub. There's a section on there called Crumple, which is my custom package. It's not on the package manager right now. Uh, it will be in future, but I'm still developing it. So I don't want to release it um, globally just yet, but it's available if anyone wants to download and try it out here. So thanks for watching today. Um, if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. And I look forward to seeing you in future videos where we look at more Python in Dynamo. Um, so thanks for watching and take care, bye. Thank <laughs> you.